In this video, we're going to be looking at a common low-level design coding question, which is to design a token bucket algorithm. So let's jump in. Token bucket algorithms are commonly used as rate limiting algorithms to protect services from being overwhelmed. So what is a rate limiter? A rate limiter is simply a tool or a mechanism that controls the number of requests or actions a user or system can perform within a specific time frame. And what's it used for? So it's used typically to prevent overload, so they stop too many requests from overwhelming a system, ensuring it remains responsive and doesn't crash. It also protects against DDoS attacks, so distributed denial of service tax by controlling the flood of incoming traffic from multiple sources aimed at overwhelming a system. So now that we know what rate limiters are, let's look at token buckets. So how a token bucket algorithm works. So imagine we've got a bucket that can hold a fixed number of tokens and tokens are added to the bucket at a steady rate for example, you know, one token per second, and each incoming request will then require one or more tokens to proceed. So in this example, a request will take one token. If a token is available, it's removed from the bucket and the request is allowed. However, if no tokens are available, the request is denied or queued until a token becomes available. And in the real world, Stripe used the token bucket algorithm, and in their implementation, every user has their own bucket. So let's jump into the question description. So as always, we have our description on the left and our code on the right, so let's start off with the description. So as mentioned, we have to design a rate limiting system that follows the token bucket algorithm. We are given a class token bucket with the following behavior. We have capacity. So this is the maximum number of tokens that can be stored in a bucket. We also have a refill rate. So this is the number, a possibly fractional number of tokens that are added to the bucket every second. And each user has an independent bucket identified by their user ID. A request consumes a specified number of tokens and a request is allowed if after refilling up their current time, the user's bucket still contains at least that many tokens. So our job is to implement the following methods. So we've got the constructor of the token bucket. This will have a capacity which defaults to five and a refill rate which defaults to one. And we have to initialize the data structure and both arguments are optional. We have a can request method that will take a user ID as a string and a require tokens. And so this will return true and deduct required tokens if the user currently has enough tokens, otherwise it will return false and no tokens are removed. We also have the available tokens method, which takes a user ID as a string and returns an integer. So it will return the integer number of full tokens the user has at that moment. So looking at the example, in the input here, we've got the methods that are being called as well as the parameters that are being called with them. So we initialize the token bucket. We're not gonna send any parameters. We're gonna use the default. Then we're gonna check the can request method for the user with an ID of one, two, three. Then we'll call the available tokens method with the, for the user with an ID of one, two, three. Then we'll check, can the user with an ID of one, two, three request, but in this case, this request will require five tokens instead of the default of one. And then finally, we're gonna check the number of available tokens the user has. So here's the output, but the explanation I think does a great job in just walking you through it. So initialize the token bucket class, return null. So we check then, can a user of one, two, three make a request? And in this case, they can, they consume one token. So they have five initially, and then it goes to four. So we return true. Then we query the remaining tokens via the available tokens method for the user with ID one, two, three, and it checks and they have four because they just consumed one. Then we attempt to consume five tokens. So can request user of ID one, two, three with five. We know that user only has four available. So we simply return false and do nothing to their tokens. And then we check again available tokens for the user with ID one, two, three. And again, we return four since the bucket state is unchanged since the last request was denied. And I guess the key constraint here is maybe we can assume the judge calls the methods in real time. Any two successive calls are at least zero milliseconds apart. So hopefully you've got a good idea and now let's walk through the code. So in the constructor, capacity represents the maximum number of tokens a bucket can hold. The refill rate is the number of tokens added per second and both of these are coerced to a float so fractional math works without integer division. Then we have tokens, which is a dictionary where the keys will be the user IDs and the values will be the user's current token count. We're using a default dict here, which automatically populates each new key with the capacity as the default value, which makes sense as when a new user joins, they will automatically have a full bucket. The last refill time tracks the last moment each user's bucket was refilled. This is a dictionary where the key will be the user ID and the value will be the last moment each user's bucket was refilled represented as the number of seconds since the Unix epoch. Again, we're using a default dictionary here so that the value of new keys will automatically be set to the current timestamp via time.time .time in this case, which returns the number of seconds since the Unix epoch. And then finally, we will create a lock to ensure atomic updates when multiple threads access the bucket simultaneously. Now, this isn't strictly necessary, but it's a kind of a great way to go above and beyond in the interview and kind of show off your knowledge. Next, we'll add an internal method refill, which is indicated by the leading underscore. The purpose of this is to update a user's tokens and last refill time to determine if they are allowed to make the request. And this will be used in more than one method, 
in this class and hence why we've abstracted it into a separate function to prevent code duplication. So current time captures the timestamp at the moment of the refill calculation. Then we compute elapsed seconds since the user's bucket was last updated. New tokens represents how many tokens the user has earned in that interval calculated by multiplying the rate times the time. Then we add the new tokens to the existing balance capped at the capacity. And then finally, we update the recorded refill timestamp so that the next call only counts fresh time. So this is a really nice method that will just simplify the logic in our following methods. Next, we have the can request method. And so this essentially asks, does the user ID have at least the required tokens available right now? So we use the lock here as we are entering a critical section and we only want one thread to alter the shared state at a particular point in time. So we're using the internal refill method and we're passing in the user ID to firstly refresh their Bucket so that the token count is up to date. Then we'll have the check. So we check if the user has enough tokens and then we use a tiny epsilon to dodge any kind of floating point rounding errors when tokens are very close to the threshold as well as for testing purposes. And then we will deduct the cost if sufficient tokens exist and then we'll permit the request by returning true. Otherwise, if there aren't enough tokens, we simply deny the request by returning false, and then we do not deduct any tokens from the user's bucket. And then finally, we have the available tokens method, which returns the current integer token count for a user. And again, we're using the same locking and refill procedures as above, ensuring that there is a fresh state. Then we will convert the possibly fractional token count to an integer after adding the epsilon. So for example, 4.999 becomes five rather than four, and then we simply return that integer. So how does everything work together? We've got our initialization, which sets the pair user bucket lazily the first time you reference a user ID. We've got a refill logic, which awards tokens continuously proportional to the elapsed real time up to a fixed capacity. We've got thread safety is maintained by using a single lock guarding both read and write operations. And then we've got the epsilon fudge factor preventing rare false negatives positives due to floating point precision. So as a result, I think this token bucket cleanly supports high concurrency pair user rate limiting with kind of minimal external dependencies and is a great solution to give in an interview. So let's run the tests and see if it passes. Perfect, the test passed. Let's run the test suite and see if all tests pass. Perfect, all tests pass. So if you wanna test yourself, the link to the question is in the description. If you got any value out of it, be sure to like and subscribe and share it with a friend as it helps the channel out a lot. And I will see you in the next one.